that way. All right, so we are going to continue on uh, talking about chapter four today. Um, we're going to start out with that discussion about supplemental wages that I had kind of alluded to before we left on Tuesday. A um, couple different ways that employees uh, or that employers can withhold on supplemental wages. Um, and we'll go through what those, what those ways are. Uh, we're also going to talk about grossing up supplemental wages. So in that case, again, if you want a, um, if you're an employer and you want an employee to actually walk away with a certain amount of money, we can use, we have a formula that we can use to kind of back into what our gross pay is for that. Then we're going to look at some reporting forms. Now you're familiar with at least one of them, the 941. We did a lot with that in the last chapter. Um, we're going to take a look at the, the W-2. Many of you are probably familiar with that form as well. Um, if you've ever been employed before, then you've probably received a W-2 or should have received a W-2 that reports the total wages that you were paid for the year. Taxpayers then use that, or employees then use that information as taxpayers when they file their individual tax returns. So we're gonna look at that. We're gonna talk about this W-3 form, which relates to the W-2. Um, then we're gonna look at some individual 1099 forms, and you'll see those are for miscellaneous items of income that aren't wage, uh, wage related. Um, and then, uh, so this 8027 as well, I should not want to talk too much about that other than just to point it out. Then we're going to take a look at what Iowa does. So um, again, these rules are for 2022, um, simply because 2023 hasn't finished yet, but we'll take a look at how Iowa is doing things currently. If you recall early on in the class, I had mentioned that Iowa is in the process of changing how they, um, their income tax system, going from a progressive tax system, um, where the more you make, the more tax you're gonna pay on that additional income to a flat tax. So we're in the process of flattening <coughs> those, those tax rates, but we'll take a look at where we were in 2022, and that should get us through the day. Um, our last day, we will uh, talk about that appendix. We're gonna look at how uh, so next Tuesday, we're going to look at how um, the calculation for federal withholding was done using forms 2019 and earlier, um, which we still need to do that because there are still some of those forms out there. Um, employees were not required to uh, issue to fill out new forms when the new forms were uh, submitted. They were encouraged to do so. Um, but there still may be a few of those forms out there that employees are using. So it's a very, it's entirely possible that employers are using two different, uh, two different schemes for calculating withholding, both the pre-2020 and the post-2020 methods. Okay, so let's get rolling here on these supplemental wages. So again, supplemental wages, we're talking about some sort of wages being paid in addition to regular wages so it could be a bonus could be commissions um you know any any number of different types of of payments and there are a couple of ways that employers can calculate the withholding on those separate payments so um and i'm going to talk first about the the main ways here they can create a separate payment so they could just cut a separate check or make a separate direct deposit that pertains only to that pay. Um, or they can combine it with the regular wages of an employee. Now that's pretty easy to do. So you've just got, you've got your regular wages. Let's see if any of these work. Not much. Thousand dollars, let's say we get a bonus. So normally on a normal payday, we would have, we would calculate withholding based on this thousand dollars, received a $250 bonus. So now we're going to calculate our tax based on that entire amount. Okay. So that also means that say we have a 401k, we're, we're the employee is contributing a percentage towards their 401k, that means that percentage is gonna change in this particular pay period because now they've got this bonus, that 3% that 
or 2% or whatever they're contributing, that percentage is also going to be based on the total amount there of both, um, of both uh, types of pay. So that's the easiest one, really, to do, where you're calculating the withholding on the total amount of taxable wages. But the other way is to create a separate payment. And there are two different options here when we do create a separate payment. Now, I want to I want to point something out in your book. I'm not going to pull it up, but I just noticed it um, a couple of days ago. When you're reading about these different methods, I think they have they've made a typo and mentioned method A instead of when they meant to mention method B um, here. So just pay attention to how it's done up here because that's a little bit confusing. I had to read it a few times to understand what exactly was going on there. Um, so again, this, this only pertains to when we are cutting a separate check for that bonus or that commission, whatever it is. Method A, we can use this method if the taxes were already withheld from regular wages. And what we're going to do, it's a little, actually I'm going to start with method B because it's easier. Um, I'll come back to method A. So method B is we just assess a flat tax on it. And that flat tax rate is 22%. Unless the supplemental amount is over a million dollars. I hope someday we all receive a supplemental payment of over a million dollars. Unless of course it's because inflation is so high that a million dollars is worth not too much. Um, but so that flat rate, that's super easy, right? Just that, that flat percentage. So in this case, we would, if we're using uh, method B, we would calculate our tax on our regular pay during our regular pay period. And then this 250, we would just take 22% of it. And that would be our federal withholding on that amount. Again, that's gonna be a separate check, okay? The bonus as well is going to be subject to FICA taxes. So social security and Medicare taxes are also gonna be withheld from it as well as state income taxes. Okay, so that's super easy. Method A involves, um, and, and there are only certain circumstances under which you can use this method A. So if the taxes were already withheld from the regular wages, so in this case, we, we've got, they're being cut, two checks are being cut at the same time, essentially, and on that, regular pay, they're already withholding from those regular wages, which would normally be the case anyway, that they would be doing that. Um, if they are doing that, then what we do is we combine the supplemental and regular wages, we, we combine it and tax this full amount, and then we calculate what the withholding is on the $1,000 alone, and then we subtract that amount and that's the, the difference is what we would help withhold on the $250. So for example, and I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use a flat tax uh, percentage here to make it a little bit easier to understand. So we would first calculate, let's say we're in the, we've got a 10% tax, okay? So we're gonna multiply the full amount by 10%, so $125. We're gonna multiply the regular amount by 10%, so $100. And then we're gonna subtract the larger amount from the smaller amount. The difference is the amount then that's gonna be withheld from the $250, okay? So it's entirely possible these percentages might be different, so you wouldn't get that nice neat, uh, you know, calculation there, but that's the general gist of it. So it's just finding the difference between what the total tax would be and what just the tax on regular wages would be. Okay, and again, that's method A. You can only use it if taxes were already withheld from those regular wages. Because as you can see, otherwise they would be under withheld because that $100 wouldn't have been wouldn't have been taken out, okay? Questions about these supplemental methods. Obviously this, you know, that flat rate is the easiest way to do it, or just adding it to our regular wages, right? And 
combining it. But the problem with adding it to our regular wages is you are you very well may um, incur a higher tax rate because it pushes the employee into a higher bracket. So then the calculation of the withholding may be higher than if we were using this method here because the rates, I mean, not always gonna be the same, but there's a greater chance it's gonna be the same, okay? Um, all right, any questions on that? Could you do another example of like, what it would look like? Method A? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, Well, actually, let's uh, let's do a real life example. Okay, so let's say that we have. Um, I'll have you guys look this up on your tables. So we've got an individual; they get twelve hundred fifty dollars as their regular pay. Mary, Mary filing jointly, weekly. Actually, let's use biweekly just because I want to make sure that that's on the table. Um, and no checkbox. Okay, and then in this period, they receive a bonus of five hundred dollars. So this is regular, and this is their bonus. So the first thing that I would do is look up and see what the tax would be on using these, all of this information. Use the table. Okay, to look up what that tax would be. So we'll go back to our tables here. Um, our 15T and our wage bracket method. So 1250. So here's our. Here's the row that we're going to look at. Um, married, filing jointly, said no checkbox, right? So $82. So this is our regular withholding. Now let's look at what the, and again, that, then that, that would have been a separate check that was cut. Right, so eighty-two dollars would have been withheld. Do I have the eighty-two? Same. We did it from the weekly on that one. So oh, am I looking bi at the wrong? You're right. Bi-weekly. Thank you. So twelve fifty. <coughs> so it ends at twelve fifty, starts at twelve fifty. Remember, we're going to use the second one here. Standard withholding. No checkbox, so $26 for regular. And then we're gonna calculate based on the total of these two, so 1250, 500, 1750. Are we still on the table? Yeah. So 1750 would result in $76. Okay. And then we're going to subtract the 76 or the 26 from the 76. $50. So that means on our bonus of $500 $50 is going to be withheld. Okay. So just, yeah, you just look up regular withholding and then the withholding on the regular pay and the bonus and then find the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. and actually, it probably would always result in the same, but this is um, the total amount would probably result in the same as if they were combined on one check, but in this case, it's gonna be if they had a separate check. Okay. So it would result in the same, you get the same result. Okay. Questions?
questions? Other questions? It's a good question. Does that make sense? <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> okay. So, what happens when we know we want our employee to receive a certain amount? We don't know what the gross amount of pay is going to be. Well, in this case, we are going to want to use, obviously, we're going to be, we're, we're going to want to give them a separate payment, and we're going to want to use the flat rate for that, because otherwise, the calculation, it can be done, certainly, but you're going to have to probably put together a pretty complex Excel spreadsheet in order to, to calculate it just simply because of that progressive nature of our taxes. But if we want, this is called the gross up, gross up of that supplemental wage. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the payment that we want. So let's just say that, um, that uh, Carson here did a really good job. We wanna give him a bonus of $500 and we want him to, that's how much we want him to have, right? So bonus is 500. And this is our net. So now we have to work backwards to figure out what our gross pay should be. Because as we all know, there's gonna to have to be taxes assessed on that bonus. The calculation is we're gonna take the net pay desired, the 500, and we are gonna divide it by one, which is essentially 100%, minus the sum of all of the other percentages for those taxes. Well, Social Security tax is 6.2%, Medicare tax is 1.45%, plus we're gonna use 22% for our supplemental tax rate. So 7.6, whoops, should say 7.6, 0.0765. Two. Now we're going to assume right now that we don't have any state income tax because if we had state income tax, we would want to add that into the calculation as well. Okay, and we will do a, an example of how that works with the uh, with the the state income tax included. Okay, so one minus these percentages for these. So one, one, I'm sorry, one plus 0.22. I'm one minus the combination of those. So 0.22 plus 0 0.0765. Now the 0 0.0765 is simply 6.2% plus 1.45%. Okay, if it's easier for you to remember it by putting by separately listing all of those percentages, that's fine. You're gonna end up with the same number. So what we have here is then 500 divided by one minus point, what do I have here? Two, nine, six, five. So point seven oh three five. Seven ten seventy three. This is our gross pay. Now we can check that, make sure that we've got it right. In order to do that, we're just going to calculate what the withholding would be for each of those taxes on that gross pay. So we'll take our Social Security tax, Medicare tax, and our federal income tax. Remember, this is 22%, 1.45%, 6.2%. So 710.73 times 0.062, 44, now it's 4407. We're rounding here, so we may, I, hopefully we're gonna be off by a penny because I wanna show you what to do if that's the case. 
um, 710.73 times 0 0.0145, so 1031. And then 22%. One fifty six thirty six So we're going to subtract all of these into our net. We make that 71074 instead of the 71073, then we're going to get to 500. Magic. We're going to do another one. So, let's do one with us. Uh, state income tax. You do always want to double check your work though because, and I know you've got a homework problem where it doesn't come out exact. What they're at, they'll ask you for the gross amount, but in order to find that gross amount, you've got to double check your work and you'll find out that, oh, I'm a penny off. I'm going to have to change that. So make sure you, you double check your work by doing the final calculation to make sure that it was correct. Also, it's just good practice anyway to make sure that you didn't mess up anywhere. All right, so we'll do a different amount here. Let's say we want a net bonus of 1500. We've got um, in the state tax rate is 5%. This will be easier once Iowa goes to a flat tax because then it will just be a flat tax rate. All right, to figure out then the gross amount, we're gonna take the 1,500 divided by one minus, and then we're gonna sum up all of our tax rates. So we've got 6.2% plus 1.45% plus 22% percent, I should put these in percentages because otherwise it's going to mess us up, plus 5%, okay? So let's add all of those percentages up. I'm going to do it in percentage, so 0.062 plus 0.0145, 0.22 plus 0.5, 7965, Seven nine six five percent is what we come up to. So one minus point seven nine six five. Get that right? No, yeah, sorry. What did I do here? Oh, I did point five. Now see, I got my my percentage wrong. I said point five instead of point zero five for the five percent. We did. There we go. Oh, no, that's not right either. Come on. All right. Three, four, six, five. Did everybody see where I made that mistake? With my 5%, I, I called it 50% instead of 5%. Okay, so one minus 
6535. Now we're going to take our 1500 and that's what we're going to divide. We're going to divide the 1500 by this. Nine eighty twenty-five. That's not right either. I multiplied it. Divided by point six five three five. There we go. Twenty-two ninety-five thirty-three. So here's our gross. All right. Now, so we worked backwards. Now we got to work forwards again. So 22.95.33 will have Social Security tax, 6.2%. Medicare, 1.45%. Federal, 22%. State, 5%. And then we'll arrive at our net. Twenty-two ninety-five thirty-three times 0.062. 497, I'm sorry, 50497. 11477. Questions about how this works. If you need to write down that that percentage so you've got it, you know, handy, so you don't forget it, it's probably a good idea. No questions. Let's do a let's do a practice one then. Let's see if you get it. Um, to be um, flat rate of 22% state rate is 3% Just take a couple minutes and try and figure that out what the gross pay would be on those amounts
check your work on it too. Anybody done yet? are ready. Maybe have the gross. If you double checked it, you should be very confident with your results. Anyway. $1,113.59. 1113.59. Everybody get that? For the gross amount. So remember, to calculate that, we're going to take the 750 
that's our numerator. And then one minus the sum of all of our tax rates. So 6.2, 1.45, 1.45, 1.45, 1.45, 1.45. These are percentages, and three. So we add all of those together and I'll put these in decimals. 0.62 plus 0 0.0145 plus 0.22 plus 0.03. We solve for that. Solve this first. 0.62 minus, oops, sorry, plus. 0.0145 plus 0.22 plus 0.03. So 32.65. So now we've got 1 minus 0.3265. Solve for that. 67.6735. All right, so there's our denominator. Now we just do the math on that. So 750 divided by 0 0.6735. 1113 rounds to 5.9. What's the social security tax on that? How do you calculate the social security tax on that? What's the social security tax rate? 6.2%. Okay, so how do we calculate the Social Security tax on that 111359? Times 6.2%. Yes, we're going to multiply the 1113.59 times 6.2%. Thank you. So 6904. We're going to be subtracting this. All right. What about Medicare tax? How do we how do we figure out how much Medicare tax we're going to withhold? Multiply by zero. Right. We're going to multiply that same number, the gross one 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 three five nine times point oh one four five sixteen fifteen rounds two. All right. Federal income tax. We've got a flat rate of 22%. So how do we arrive at the amount to withhold for federal income tax? What's that? <laughs> I know you guys know this. Jordan, how do we arrive at the federal income tax? We multiply by 22%. Correct. Thank you. 244.99. Okay, state income tax. Sophia, how do we know how much state income tax we're going to withhold? How do we do that calculation? So it's up here. I'm, I, it's a little louder. So it's our in this in this example, it's three percent. We've listed three percent for the state tax rate. Oh, okay. Yeah, the last the last one was five percent. Oh, okay. So what are we gonna? How, how 
tell me the calculation to arrive at state income tax in this scenario. What are we going to multiply by 3%? I'm sorry? The gross pay. Yeah, the gross pay. We're going to take the gross pay and multiply it by the 3%. So, one, one, four, one, one, three, five, nine times 0 0.03, 3341. What's our last step? See? We're just going to subtract. You guys were all so chatty. I guess you all you all have it down pat, right? All right, let's move on then. So we have some other forms that we need to that we need to talk about here. So the W-2 form, and I think there's a, yeah, there's an example of what the W-2 form is here. And, you know, many of you have, like I said, have probably received these. They're not necessarily, now, it, all W-2 forms have the same information. Let me see if I can't find, well, let me make it bigger. Ooh, too big. forms are going to have the same information on them. They may look a little bit different. They may be oriented a little bit different. This one is probably half of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, there are W-2s that are, will take up, like they can fit three of them on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So all of this is kind of spread out. It's not as, it's not as long, but it's wider. There are W-2s where they'll fit four on a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. The reason there are multiple copies is because there is one copy that goes to the employee. One copy, actually the employee is gonna get several copies, but they're only gonna keep one of them. The employee is gonna keep one of the copies. One of the copies, the employee is going to provide with their tax return. Now, we don't do that so much anymore. In the olden days, you used to actually physically staple the piece of paper to the tax return and then mail the tax return in. Nowadays, most people e-file their tax returns, so it's not really a matter of having to staple anything, but there's still that, that copy that is for filing with the federal income tax form is still used. So the employee will get that copy. They'll also get a copy to use for filing and attaching to their state income tax form. Um, and there will be an, a, a fourth copy at a minimum for the employer's records, okay, that the employer keeps. Now there may be additional copies that are provided if the employee lives in a jurisdiction where there are local taxes, county taxes, city taxes, that sort of thing. Now in Iowa, we don't have those types of taxes. We have state taxes, we have federal taxes, and we're talking income taxes here. We have lots of other kinds of taxes, but as far as income taxes go, um, for Iowa, we're only gonna be filing tax returns as taxpayers to the federal government and then to the state government. But like I said, there are places where there are additional taxes. Now the example up here is a w, uh, W-2 form from Philadelphia. 
So this employee lives in Philadelphia. And you can see there is a local Philadelphia income tax here. A lot of Eastern states have that. I know Michigan has multiple levels of income tax. I have a friend that lives in Ohio. She pays, I think I may have mentioned her, she pays um, so federal income tax, state income tax, school district income tax, county income tax, and city income tax. She has all those tax returns that she has to file, that I have to help her file. Um, so it could be that there are actually more W-2s included for the employee if they have those multiple jurisdictions to file in, okay? But for the most part, if you just got a, a state and federal tax, you're gonna, the employee is gonna receive at a minimum three of those, um, of these W-2s, and the employer is going to keep one as well. Now, what's the information on this? Obviously, there's some identifying information over here on the left, who the, uh, the employee's name, I'm sorry, the employer's name up here and the employee's name down here. We've got the employee's social security number. Nowadays, most times, that is masked. Maybe they'll only show the last four digits of the social security number, just for, for, privacy, um, for privacy issues, for privacy sake. We've also got the employer's identification number, taxpayer ID number, that EIN. Those aren't masked. Employers aren't as concerned about those being used um, for fraudulent purposes. We haven't really encountered like that like we have with social security numbers. And EINs are a lot easier to obtain. It's easier to obtain a new one if something happens than with the social security number. So that one, you're really not probably gonna see that one masked. So over here on the right hand side, you can see lots of boxes. Um, there are two columns, boxes one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. So we've got odd number boxes down here, and then we got even number boxes over on the right. On the left are wages, wages that were paid that were subject to the tax that is listed to the right of that wage. So, federal wages, tips, and other compensation here is in line one. Those are, that is income that is subject to federal income tax. So it may not be all of the income that the employee received, right? Because there are other types of compensation that aren't subject to federal income tax. So, but it's only going to include those items that were actually taxed. So those, those um, the amount that we ultimately ended up withholding on for federal income tax purposes. And then over to the right here is the amount of federal income tax, corresponding federal income tax that was withheld. Line three, social security wages. You will see here, well, I guess they're all three the same in this example, but it's, it's common for them not to be the same, okay? Social security wages, again, this is the amount of wages that were subject to social security tax. And then to the right, the amount of social security tax that was withheld. Same thing for line five, Medicare wages and tips, Medicare tax withheld. And then we have a box as well here for social security tips, allocated tips, dependent care benefits. These are, uh, this is other information. Once we get down into here, this, this is other information about withholdings, amounts that were withheld from the paycheck. Some of those items might be pre-tax, some of them might be post-tax. Um, this line 12A, you'll see there's a 12A, B, C, D. There are codes that correspond with this. These are particular types of deductions. So the C is, I believe that's a, uh, a retirement plan, an amount for a retirement plan, I think. I can't remember this exact example. Um, so we can see that they had $78 withheld for this particular type of benefit. But that wouldn't be a retirement plan. Because if it's, this was a retirement plan, those numbers should be different. Because remember, retirement plan deductions are pre-tax for income tax purposes, but they are not pre-tax for Social Security and Medicare tax purposes. So if you have an amount that's withheld for uh, retirement plans, you will see a difference between boxes one and box three and five. 
Also, remember, we have that social security wage base. So once we reach that social security wage base, any wages above that are not gonna be subject to social security taxes, which means this box here, box three, can never exceed what the social security wage base is for the current year. It's never gonna be higher than that. So for our purposes, 147,000 would be the most that would be in that box three. Medicare taxes, there's no wage base for that, right? So if you've got, if you have an employee who has $200,000 of federal income tax uh, or wages subject to federal income tax, you're gonna see 200,000 in box one, but you're gonna see 147,000 in box three because no more than that can be subject to social security tax in 2022. At the bottom of the W-2, well, first let me, let me point out these things. Line 13 here, there are some boxes, and it's hard, I know it's hard to see. There are some boxes to check. Let me see if I can find a W-2 that's better, that's a little less grainy. I can show you an example. I think this is, no, it's not. The check, no, I thought it was. Never mind. Anyway, um, so you can see this a lot better. The wages, Social Security wages, Medicare wages, and then tips. If there were any tips, the tips would be separate for Social Security tax purposes. Remember on the 941, we had a separate line for Social Security tips. That corresponds to this. Lines 13 and 14, so line 13, we've got three choices here. Statutory employee, remember statutory employees are kind of that special hybrid type of employee. They get some of the benefits of an independent contractor in that they can, they can deduct their expenses, but they have withholding. Their, their employer has to withhold. So if they're a statutory employee, that box is checked. If they participated in a retirement plan, this box is checked as well. That's important because there are limits on how much can be contributed to retirement plans. And depending upon whether you had one at work or not, that limit is different. Okay, so that's why that box is there. Third party sick pay, so that would be like disability pay, which would come on a W-2 as well. You'll see the other one had box 14 entered. That is information that may or may, it's there for the benefit of the tax preparer or the taxpayer, whoever is filling out the income tax form, it will contain information that may be useful in preparing the tax return. So for example, here on this one, we've got, it says Blue Cross Blue Shield premium, they withheld $296. Um, and then they've got Pennsylvania state unemployment insurance. So Pennsylvania must require some contribution on behalf by the employee toward a state uh, unemployment insurance. This blue class and blue shield premium, the $296, the fact that it's in that box and not over here actually tells me that it's probably from a non-accountable, it's not a pre-tax amount. They don't have a cafeteria plan set up. Okay, so it's not pre-tax for the employee. Normally, health insurance would be listed, that is pre-tax would be listed over here in one of these boxes and there is a code associated with it. At the bottom, we have all of our state information. So it is possible for an employee, a single employee for a single at a single employer to work in multiple states, right? You might work part-time in one state, part-time in another state, but for the same employer um, or you, you know, maybe you moved during the year, but you stayed with the same employer, right? So that's why we have a couple of lines here available to use for multiple states. If there was more than two states, you would then see another W-2 with that state information. Information about what the state is, the employer's state ID number, sometimes this is the same as the, the federal 
ID number, sometimes it's not. State wages, so this, these are wages that the state taxes. So here you can see, so that's 29,282, and that's 29,360. So whatever this $78 is, was not taxable for state purposes. So it was pre-tax for state purposes. I don't know, I can't, I don't know what that is, but. Um, and then the amount of state income tax that was withheld, local wages, which in this case is the same as their state wages, and then the local income tax that was withheld, and the locality. All of that information is used by the taxpayer, tax preparer, who is sometimes the taxpayer, um, to prepare those federal income tax forms, the form 1040, at the end of the year. This is a summary of all of the gross pay, or taxable pay, that we've had during the year, all of the social security tax that each individual employee has paid. This is only the employee's portion, not the employer's portion. This is only gonna be the amount that the employee paid. Medicare taxes, federal income taxes, state income taxes, if there were local income taxes as well. If there were, now you can see there's also like dependent care benefits. If an amount was withheld for dependent care benefits, remember we talked about those types of benefits where an amount can be withheld from a paycheck, put into a separate savings account, and then the employee can draw funds from that savings account to pay for dependent care, usually child care costs. So if an amount was withheld for that purpose, that would be listed in box 10. Okay, who's received a W-2 before? Yeah, okay, so you guys are familiar. You've seen, you've seen what they look like. Did you know all of that stuff or did you, when you got it, you just handed it off to whoever was so-so? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you know, some, some, some people pay close attention to it. Some people, they look at a tax form and they just, their, their mind goes blank. Um, I suspect that most of you are not those people because you're in this class here. So, um, but it contains a lot of information. Each employee receives one. Now, in addition to, let's see. In addition to the W-2 form, sorry, I'm gonna get back to my, there we go. So we've got that W-2 form, but which is for each individual employee. We also have what's called a W-3 form. So I think we talked about this a little bit in the last chapter. Did we, did we not? We may have, I can't remember. It all blends together. Um, the W-3 form, summarizes the information that is on all of the W-2 forms. So a W-3 is going to contain the, the sum of all of those, those amounts. I'll pull up a W-3 for you so you can see what it looks like. All right, you can see the W-3 looks an awful lot like a W-2. However, the amounts that are in these boxes will pertain to every employee at that company for that year. Okay, so the employee, and employees do not get a copy of this. The Social Security Administration gets a copy of it, the federal, um, federal government gets a copy of it, the IRS, um, the state may or may not get a copy of it, just depends on the state if they, if they require it or not. But you can see the same boxes with the same types of, of titles in these boxes. So box one, wages, tips, and other compensation. So that would be the sum of every employee's box one wages. Box three, the sum of every employee's box three wages. Same thing for five, seven, all of these. Box two, the sum of every employee's federal income taxes withheld. Social security taxes withheld, same thing. Medicare taxes withheld. Now remember, we're gonna talk about the 941s a little bit as well. Um, remember on our 941 forms, we had, I guess I could pull up a 941 just to refresh your memory. Okay. 
So if you recall, on our 941s, and these are done quarterly, we had a box, wages, tips, and other compensation. This would be the total of those wages, tips, and other compensation that would be subject to federal income tax during the quarter. We have line federal income tax withheld from those wages is line three. That would be the sum again for the quarter. Now the W3 is gonna show you the sum for the whole year. The 941s have the sum for each quarter. All of the 941s have to match what's on the W3. So all four quarters of box two on the 941 totaled up have to equal what is on, where's the W3 here? What is on box one for the W3? All of the, my line's right here. Remember line three here is the total of federal income tax withheld. All four quarters of those that totaled up has to equal the amount that's in box two on the W3. These have to match. So those 941s are used at the end of the year to reconcile with the W3. If they don't match, you gotta make a match somehow. Some, there, somewhere there was, a, there was an error, okay? But they have to be exact. The, uh, the, the IRS does check that. So the same thing with social security tax withheld. Remember we've got We've got our social security taxable wages here. We also have that here on, on the W-3, so this would be all four quarters of those 941s. Social security taxes withheld, this box four, would be the total of everything, of all four quarters of line 5A, column two, okay? So again, they're used to reconcile at the end of the year. The W, now there is, like I said, some states do ask for a copy of the W-3, some of them don't, but there is state information at the bottom of these W-3 forms as well, okay? And again, employees don't get these. These are for the payroll department and for the IRS and for the Social Security Administration. So this is a report that is only um, between reporting agencies and the employer. It is possible to correct these if an error has been made. And sometimes errors are made. Sometimes W-2s are issued and some mistake has been made. The payroll department can issue a corrected W-2. It's called a W-2C, C for corrected. If that happens and any of the numbers that, and the correction on the W-2 would have also changed any of these numbers on the W-3, then a corrected W-3 would also have to be filed, which is a W-3C also, okay? Let's see here. All right, so that 941, kind of, you know, refresh your memory on it. Remember there are some other, um, re other forms that, are re that also report the same information, but for different types of entities. So we've got, 943 is for agricultural um, employers. They just have their own special form. Um, we don't really do much with these. This is just kind of an FYI. Uh, 944 is filed. Um, that is the annual form for, for uh, employers who have less than $1,000 in payroll taxes that they owe for the year. Remember we had that, they got that option to just file it once a year, but it has to be a really small amount that's, that's due. 945 is a form that's used for different types of income, like retirement income. Um, I think, uh, what other types of income is I used for? Let me see here. Non-payroll items. So backup withholding, withholding on gambling winnings, pensions, annuities, um, taxable interest, dividends. So the bank, when they pay interest every, every month, at the end of the year, they have to report how much interest has been paid. They report that 
on a 945. And then if any amounts were also withheld during the year, they're gonna report that also, okay? So this is for just other types of, um, of income. All right, let's talk a little bit. We've got like 10 minutes left here. I think we can get through. We're not gonna get to Iowa. We'll get to Iowa next Tuesday. Okay, so some other types, well, we might get a little bit to Iowa here. Some other types of, these are called information returns. They're information returns because, and the W-2 is an information return. It's a return that provides information to the taxpayer for when they file their tax returns. There are lots of different types of 1099 forms. Um, the 1099 is kind of for all, it's kind of a catch-all for all different types of income but there are specific um, suffixes for particular types of income. So it's a 1099 dot, dot, dot. Um, so for the first one here, 1099 DIV reports dividends received. So if an employee, if a, a taxpayer receives dividends from a corporation or a mutual fund, some type of investment, it is reported on an annual basis. Again, these are on an annual basis. It's reported on a 1099 DIV and the taxpayer uses that form to prepare their own individual tax return. Uh, 1099-G, a lot of you have probably received this form before. If you've ever received a state income tax refund, you would have received a 1099-G. In Iowa, it usually comes on like a little postcard size, size thing. Um, so sometimes state income tax refunds are taxable and sometimes they're not but they always have to be reported to um, taxpayers. So unemployment compensation as well is reported on a 1099-G. So essentially anything from the government, right, is gonna be reported on that 1099-G. 1099-INT <coughs> is for interest income. Now, if the amount of interest is less than $10 during the year, the total during the year from your the, a single bank, so Say you've got five banks at Wells Fargo and each of them earn just a tiny little bit of interest. And during the entire year, you earned on all five of those accounts, $9 of interest. Wells Fargo is not required to send you one of these 1099 INT forms. Same with the dividend form, by the way, $10 is the, is the cutoff for sending those out. Um, they may still send it out. Taxpayer is still required to report it, even if they don't receive a 1099 for it. But 1099 INT is for interest payments. 1099 miscellaneous is kind of a catch-all. It's got a lot of different categories of income on it. Rent income is included on that. So if you have a rental property and you are required to receive a 1099 for that rental income, that's reported on a 1099 miscellaneous. Royalties different types of commissions, fees, and prizes. We're not talking about commissions that are earned as a W-2 employee though, okay? Maybe as a contractor, um, something like that. Prizes, awards, awards pay of over 600 paid to non-employees as well. Um, so yeah, so that 1099 miscellaneous is used for a lot of different things. It used to be that contractor income was also reported on the 1099 miscellaneous. However, that was really confusing because that meant that that 1099 miscellaneous form contained income, some of which was subject to Social Security and Medicare tax, and some of which was not subject to Social Security and Medicare tax. So they did the wise thing in recent years and they separated those. So now we have this form called the form 1099 NEC non-employee compensation. So for independent contractors, the cutoff for this to be issued is $600. So if you worked during the year for, I don't know, Uber, and you made $500, Uber's not required to send you a 1099. You are still required to report the income. Taxpayers are still required to report it, but Uber is not required to send it out. Now that doesn't mean they don't. A lot of companies just routinely send them out to everybody. Okay, but there is, they are not required to if it's under $600. Um, this one, 1099 PATR, you do see these in Iowa. These are for patronage dividends. A lot of, um, a lot of 
uh, folks in rural areas of Iowa, and it doesn't even have to be rural areas, but are, are members of co-ops in those areas, and they get what's called a patronage dividend. Um, those amounts are reported on 1099 PATR forms, okay? Those are a little weird because sometimes they're taxable and sometimes they're not. 1099-R, so this is another type of 1099 form. This, is, this reports income from pensions and annuities, retirement plans, 401ks, IRAs, any type of retirement plan, insurance contract, or annuity would be reported on a 1099-R. Again, these are received by taxpayers on an annual basis, okay? And they're, they're issued by the payer on an annual basis. Payroll departments generally don't deal with this stuff because we are concerned with employees. This is just kind of all kind of a FYI, this stuff is out there. Um, you don't have to know how to set it up, but you do need to know kind of what, what it all is because you'll, you'll encounter it. Form 5498 is, so this, the 1099-R, uh, gives information about the, the amount of distributions during the year, so the amount of payments. The 5498 is information on the amount of contributions, so how much has been put into um, a retirement plan, an IRA, a couple of specific types of retirement plans, IRAs and SEP plans. Um, this form, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this one either. This is, there's just an annual information return that employers like restaurants have to file for employees who receive tips called the 8027 and that then reports all of the tips that were either received by employees or were allocated to employees during the year lots of different forms that list is by no means exclusive <laughs> there are all sorts of other types of forms as well that when you take income tax you're going to find out about a lot more of them um, but this is this is kind of a good start for you. So um, withholding, we will start on Iowa withholding, and we'll learn about the pre 2020 method of withholding and W four form at the federal level on Tuesday. Also, start your homework because if you have any questions, I'm happy to to go through any any problems that you may have on that homework on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Did you have one, Lisa? Or, is, I mean, if somebody has, we've got a few minutes left here. If anybody has a question right now. You don't want to be that person that holds everybody up from leaving? <laughs> well, I, I, if you have a question for me up here, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, have a great weekend.